Words equal money. Because when we put a price to our services, it is almost immediate uh, differentiator, like what kind of people we will attract. And <laughs> you need you know, higher prices. <laughs> I would say I, that. Yeah. yeah. We all have clients who refuse to take brave action. That's not our fault as service providers. But when I see someone who's taking brave action, even though they're nervous, and who's breaking out of the mode that they were in, that's what I want. That's what everyone needs well-balanced words to make real sales. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, today I have an amazing guest with me, Kristen. Um, so, Kristen, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell our listeners and our viewers who uh, are watching on, on YouTube who you are, what you do, and uh, yeah, like what brought you here? Yeah, thanks so much, Eugene. Uh, I'm first of all, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for thinking of me and for your audience. Uh, I'm sure that your audience is amazing. So, hello, all audience members. I know if you're following Eugene, you must be a special brand of kind person, which is what I love about him. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, and you're like, oh, that's the lady with the glasses. Um, I am a value-based marketing expert, and what that means technically is that I'm a copywriter. So Eugene, he's like the messaging mastermind, right? He's the one who helps your brand sound like it should and do what it should. And for me, I come in and I'm like, okay, let's write the words that you need now to support that. And the world of copywriting should mean words equal money. It doesn't always happen that way unfortunately, but with my approach, which is value-based, I make sure that my clients are getting an ROI because so many people have been burned when it comes to business writing. It is my passion to help. And that's why I have developed my strategic method that I use with my clients. Wow. That's amazing. Listen, you know, when you have a good copywriter on the show, when your copywriter can introduce you, then you can introduce yourself. So... <laughs> <laughs> it was my pleasure. <laughs> well, thank you for the introduction. So uh, for my listeners who uh, saw my previous guests on the show, so we are taking a little twist on the show. So um, this is, and again, if you're listening to it and like, oh my gosh, I like this, I want this, uh, feel free to DM me. But the new format uh, is basically I bring a guest and we do two part like two way mentorship or coaching session. So my guest brings a question, a real question, um, and we mastermind together and um, we do a coaching session together. And also because I bring only experts on my show, I ask my question to them. And uh, the the essence of it is just we both being vulnerable and authentic. Um, and uh, for you listeners and uh, viewers, it's an excellent way to uh, tune in and learn about my uh, my guests and also see yourself in this situation because I know you probably are going through similar things and um, I uh, my hope is to bring you a lot of value and uh, lessons along the way. So Kristen, what is your question? What did you bring today? So I brought a question about pivoting because I know that your brand has had a hard pivot my brand has had a hard pivot and I'm pivoting again to a different audience uh, with a different baseline because of the way that my services have changed over time. And one of the things that I've really struggled with is knowing which like coach would be a good fit depending on the season that I'm in. I've had a lot of different coaches and I know you offer coaching as part of your package. So I thought, who better to ask than Eugene? Yeah. It's such a wonderful question. Um, so, uh, first of all, pivoting is hard, and uh, you like you just a hit nail on the head because uh, it is essential to have the right support while you are pivoting. So, before we unpack uh, how how you can uh, find the right market fit or find the right coach, but find the right mentor who can support you, or maybe even a, a consultant. So, in who do you really need let's start with uh, like let's start with a bigger question what is your 
big why uh, behind the pivot. So why are you pivoting? And what is that new vision that you have for your brand? Oh, that's such a good question. So I am pivoting. And the big why is because I want to affect more change. My whole goal is to change the world one story at a time. And the way that I do that for businesses has shifted because I take a more holistic approach now. Uh, I'm looking for people who can afford to invest more because I need more time with them. I need more writing hours with them. And when someone is maybe a solopreneur and they're just starting out, they don't really have the information yet that I can utilize for them on their behalf because they're just learning who they are as a business person, right? They're just coming into the world and they have to decide for themselves as they spend time on their skill, which of these skills do I really want to use? So I'm shifting to more established organizations because I want to help them refine. And, and while I do love building things from scratch, it's really hard to do that and then write copy for it because like I posted on LinkedIn today, the validation has to come first. Yes. So uh, correct me if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong. What I'm hearing that you said is that you are basically elevating your uh, buyer persona uh, based on your expertise in order to deliver high, higher quality results, uh, long lasting results, and also finding the right market fit for you, um, a person or organization or a business who can actually implement your expertise. And for that, you need to go upstream, up level, and find more sophisticated, more affluent businesses. Did I hear you correctly? Yes, that's exactly correct. Yeah, I want to increase my impact, and that's the best way to do that for me. Okay. So, um, and I do remember your question about the coaching and the coach. So we, like, we, we, we're going to get to it. So uh, let's start with um, what have you tried? Uh, if, we, if we're talking about the coaching in, uh, on itself, uh, what have you tried before? And what do you know precisely not to do anymore? Or who do you know who like who is that person who you would look like you would look at them or you will look at the program and say like, this is probably not for me this is probably not the right solution for my pivot at the level or at the season i'm in right now yeah so one of the things that i have tried and i absolutely despise openly is the one size fits all approach where someone's like you take your business you shove it into this mold that I made that probably worked for two or three people and you pay me tens of thousands of dollars. I do not like that. I know it doesn't work for 99% of businesses and I still have my inbox flooded every day with offers like this. Oh, this is such a, like, this is such a good takeaway because, um, well, uh, there are two parts of this story, right? Like one, uh, one thing, uh, is every mentor, every consultant has, um, a recipe, uh, for the transformation that is proving to be working maybe for a certain, um, market fit for a certain group of people like you said maybe certain people do get results and also unfortunately as we sometimes see the vast majority of people who come to those programs it may not work for them maybe it's a level of readiness maybe it's maybe it's a business model maybe it is the vision and the um other aspects of the business that may, may not work for them. So like, this is really, really essential. So before we dive into like finding your right fit, uh, let's see, um, when it, when, when it comes to your like marketing, so you're elevating your buyer, you're going upstream. What are your favorite ways to, um, cultivate the community, put yourself out there and spread the word? Uh, is it like writing? Is it video? Is it, uh, blogs? Is it like anything else? How do you make yourself known and how do you cultivate those relationships? 
Yeah, that's such a great question. And prepare to be shocked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, I love writing. That's where my voice is the strongest. And so I'm comfortable whether it's informational or relational. So I am the kind of person which doesn't seem like it for people who know me because I'm super introverted that I would be comfortable going into someone's DMs. But I like that if we're going to have a real conversation because I get to use carefully curated words. Okay, so your like your superpower is writing and uh, meaningful conversations in the DMs, uh, Yes. or if not in DMs, it can be interaction in person, um, or Yes, or networking. um, network. Yeah, and I love it when people connect me. Like, that's how I met you, as we connected through Jamal. And now Yes. we're building our amazing relationship. Yes. So, um. Since it is like, and this is um, this is what I call uh, relationship marketing is when we are not like pitching like, hey, uh, this is what I offer. This is my Kaylin link schedule a call with me. I mean, can it work? Is it a numbers game sometimes? But also, we also know that uh, sophisticated buyers they take longer time to. Uh, discern and decide whether or not they want to work with you and that uh, comes through the relation like through, through the relationship marketing so uh, that makes me think one of my clients um we, we just did a, a yearly planning uh two weeks ago right before black friday for black businesses and his unique way to generate leads speaking of one size does it fit all his way to generate leads and convert clients is actually through conferences through in-person events uh, and Oh, nice. when i say conferences it can be retreats it can be conferences it can be uh meetups it can be uh strategic networking groups so this is like he uh his unique ability is literally meet people where they're at in person and when people meet him like people resonate with him and uh, our actually next step is building um well not to jump too far ahead but actually thinking about building his own conference because in order to meet the numbers that he wants to meet it would be probably like 30 40 conferences next year which is Oh, yeah, that would be a lot. <laughs> it's a lot i mean like if i have the budget like but also like it is such a string on your physical body and like i i get people that like i can be uh, uh, in 30 conferences per year Same. like that I that do. That's exactly what I call it. Peopled out. We use the same terminology. <laughs> so uh Now, uh, let's think about how would you find those um, relationship, uh, like uh, those events that you can possibly find people. Do you like creating your own? And um, I'm not telling you, hey, like, see, like, uh, Donovan is building conferences, so go ahead and join Donovan and building conferences. But what is your, like, what is your way of, um, like finding those groups uh are you like are you big on retreats are you big on local groups are you big on online networking groups or paid communities what are you what what is your like what is your secret sauce to cultivate those relationships So I would say it's probably two parts is one, I do, I do belong to some paid communities and I like that there's the pay gate because the quality of people tends to be higher in my experience. And so right now uh, I'm a member of the Entrepreneurista League, which is for female founders. And I've been going through and intentionally trying to build relationships with anyone who's open to it. And I have had some truly amazing conversations I can't recommend the Entrepreneurista League enough. And then I would say second is getting on podcast episodes like this with you because we're having an intimate conversation. We're connecting in a real way that allows other people to join us. And so that amplifies that community aspect. But at the same time, you know, I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I'm not feeling so far out of my comfort zone, right? We do need to go out of our comfort zones. And I do have it on my list, actually, to start adding, like, in real life uh, conferences to my list in my area. 
right? Because I have to be careful with my time. I have two children on the autism spectrum. So I'm managing their therapy in addition to my business and just family life. So I think that's a priority for me to be home as much as I can. Okay. So um, I think your a picture is getting a little bit clearer for me. So basically you are looking for um, a mentor who like who will understand lifestyle, building a lifestyle of business. And it, it doesn't mean that like you don't work and you make all of money. Like, no, you, you do. Sometimes we do have to grind. Sometimes we do have to put like a lot of effort into it, but also Uh, one of your values and one of a part of your why is actually create spaciousness for you to cater to your kids, to be there, to support them in, in their therapy. And um, I'm a clinical psychologist and um, I have um, experience working with uh, kids and young adults on uh, like autism spectrum. And I, uh, in young age it can be a lot it's a lot of therapy it's it's a lot of support and, and like you you have to create that environment and uh if you're following methodology that would require you to constantly be online or constantly be like out of home like let's say uh visiting speaking engagements like three four five speaking engagements per month so it probably doesn't fit you quite well yes right effort but also family in mind so am i am i am i am i thinking in the right direction when when i think about how you want to build that business how you want to create that elevation Yeah, I think for the season that I'm in right now, those are all really important considerations for me. You, you, yeah, you hit the nail on the head, as you said. okay okay so um now um i i think another uh important Uh, portion of your uh, pivot and uh, of your um, business strategy in the business model is the pricing bracket, right? Because when we put a price to our services, it is almost immediate uh, differentiator, like what kind of people we will attract and what, uh, what kind of people we will aim and That also will de will uh, inform our marketing efforts, right, and uh, our focus on the relationship. So, my question to you: What is the pricing bracket that you are aiming for your uh, for your elevation? Yeah, so I would say a baseline price of fifteen thousand to be able to get them the quality of work that I want to give them, and that includes like a twelve month plan, right? We're not just thinking about what words we're using for this campaign. We're being very intentional and doing the foundational work so that everything else can be built on top of that. Whether they work with me ongoing in the future, or they want to hand it off to a team member, or even hire another firm. Okay. Okay. I think uh, fifteen thousand dollars is quite reasonable for what you're offering, and especially at the higher level services that you provide, and it fits that high ticket offer uh, um, model. And um, so, one of the criteria I would say for your mentor and for your coach is expertise in selling uh, high ticket consulting, uh, which is like ten thousand and above. Um, expertise in consultative sales, expertise in uh, relationship marketing, and um, expertise in um, closing people. Because uh, I assume you right now, it's probably just maybe you and uh, another team member that might close people on the call in or in the DMs. You don't have a sales team, right? It, it just... No, not yet. Yeah, because we have to, you know, you know, the the method is we have to validate first with the person who's building the offer Yes. before we can pass it on to the sales team. Yeah. So that's the phase I'm in. 100 percent correct. Okay. So I think our qualities are um, uh, getting a little bit more clear for your coach. So um, high ticket, uh, uh, value-based, uh, community-oriented, and high ticket. So, and those are skills that you Uh, that you probably want to learn from them. Now, uh, tell me about uh, the uh, coaches that actually work for you because I've been in so many coaching programs and um, 
I think at this point in my um in the season in my business, I know for a fact, kind of like what you said, what works for me, who works for me, and who doesn't. So what coaches that you work before um you actually liked and you got the results, maybe not a hundred percent, maybe not the dream results that you wanted, but you you walked away with a significant with a significant ROI and Uh, if you were say if you were to say like yes that is my person how would you describe them Yeah, so I really love customized options, as I mentioned before, but also because my business model is really contrarian. When people hear about the way that I approach marketing, they're usually shocked, <laughs> I will say, but in a good way. And so I need a mentor who's going to embrace the fact that I'm not using traditional methods because I feel they're outdated. And so, you know, someone who is going to understand also how to give me strategic assignments because that's the way my brain works if you're like go get more leads i'm like i don't know what that means right if you're like hey do these four things every day 10 times okay i can do that i will do that so i need someone who's you know into strategy but also open enough to understand my contrarian ways <laughs> Okay. Okay. No, like that, like that makes sense. And speaking about lead generation, because there are so many ways to generate leads. And I would say for your offer, um, yes, you need leads, but you need, you need rather quantity leads rather than quality leads. You probably don't have the time to go through Um, solopreneurs who are not ready to invest or uh, just not at the position that like, hey, like copywriter, because I think for I, I, I'm sure that there are businesses, there are solopreneurs who are in early stages and like, hey, I, I can I can invest 15, 15K right now in my business because I know this is not working. I know I'm not good with words and I need to get good with words and they have more or less validated offer and uh, they're ready to work with but like this is qualification uh um uh, this is qualification um uh, piece so speaking of lead generation so um and also like you are aiming to like higher consciousness or uh, higher high, uh, higher conscious entrepreneur and a uh, more sophisticated entrepreneur and they probably would need to spend a little bit more intimate time with you so um let me ask you are you uh open or um are you willing to learn the art of uh podcasting for example because uh, one thing that i am um noticing in ultra high ticket uh space um and i mean those people charge thirty thousand dollars twenty five thousand dollars Uh, seven thousand dollars like they're 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 like quite up there where you at they all have a podcast and it's not just a podcast just to yap on the internet and it's a very strategic lead generation machine so and i know you're good at writing and if you're Yes. good at writing you i mean obviously you're good at speaking because like you just introduced me better than i could so What is and and you have professional mic. What is your what is your take on creating your own uh podcast and possibly using that um as a vehicle to cultivate your community? Because also, like what I know, what I know, what I know, your higher elevated buyer, they're not gonna engage in your um comments. They're not gonna like. They're not gonna share. They're probably gonna uh. stalk you online Yes, I clientsly was thinking that word. Yeah, stock. Mm -hmm. and they're gonna listen to all of your episodes and then out of nowhere a uh, person who is not connected with your own LinkedIn will send you a DM like hey I've been following you for a while and I would like to ask you some questions because I need your help so what is your take on this uh, way to cultivate the relationship because also And it's a quiet way to cultivate their relationship. This is exactly what they want. Um, curious, what is your take on that? Yeah, so actually, I have been the host of two top 5% podcasts already. 
And uh, I am planning to launch a new podcast in 2025 that matches the theme of my newsletter, which is Oblit Re. We obliterate to remake and we take outdated business principles and use what's still good and combine it with new ideas to make something that will actually make an impact. Okay. Okay. Well, um, that like, that's awesome. So, um, uh, let's return to our coach persona. So we have a buyer persona. We have, now we have a coach persona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I would imagine that that coach, uh, will be familiar with, um, more sophisticated level of marketing, such as like building podcasts or building and uh when i say building podcasts it can be a youtube it can be a podcast ideally it's right. like for me um it is both because some people like to watch you they like seeing you how you move right. some they people... want to see your face yeah <laughs> and for me like in the podcast that I'm listening to, there are on Apple Podcasts, but I will listen. I will, again, I will listen to them on YouTube. On YouTube, I'm, yes. I'm weird, okay? I, I, I know. Sometimes I will look at them like, oh, I like her dress. And oh, like, I like that. But I will just like work away or like go on the wall, go to the gym and my YouTube will be playing and not necessarily Apple podcasts or um, I will, like, I will default to Apple podcasts only when other options are not available or like yeah. YouTube is not, is not necessarily a good option because of the reception and other qualities. So we, we, like we, we know that. Now, uh, let's um, establish your um, uh, budget for like, for the coaching. So if I were to estimate your coaching persona, that person would probably charge anything from $7,000 to $25,000. Where are you falling into that like bracket uh, of pricing? Because you, uh, and again, like, a person who charges less than that, they could possibly help you. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, because like, it's not like, it's not all about the pricing, but like, if we look at realistic numbers, because also I'm reevaluating my pricing strategy for 2025. So the yeah. offer that I have right now, it's no longer going to be available January 1st because Good I also... You. I also have to be true to myself. Like, yes. I'm sorry, but like a 4K offer for 25000 in one single day as a result, like this is like significantly undervalues my values and my expertise. Like, no, it's not going to be available in 2025, friends. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would definitely tell you that's not. <laughs> you need no. higher prices. <laughs> I would say I that. Yeah, and I anticipate for me, I'm not really looking for someone who charges less than 10K because anyone I've worked with that charges less than that has not been a good fit. Okay. Yeah. So I think we like, I think we identify your, um, I think we identify your coaching persona. So like 10K, like that's, that that's standard and that's normal. And Friends, please listen to what my uh, guest was saying, like really, really carefully. And it, like, if you like, if you, if your, if your vehicle of transformation does not meet that, like, please don't slide into her DMs. Like, I know 10K sounds very appealing, but like, like it's also about honest and authentic marketing. Um, so, um, and I think the final, like the final uh, piece is um, how do you qualify them and how much time do you need to spend with your coach? Uh, not like alone, how, how much time do you need to stalk them for you right. to make a decision? <laughs> so actually, I don't want to stalk them. I want to stalk their current clients. Wow. That's, mm. I have thoughts about that too. Because it's my methodology as well, and I find it to be a little bit faulty. And this is this is where I find it to be faulty. So, 
on the one hand, it is important to stock their, like, their, you know, like, yeah, we want to see the results, not just on the testimonial page, because when people get the initial results, um, yeah, of course, they're going to share, but like, what they, what do they do after? And at the same time, entrepreneurship, it, it is a very tough game. And I It had, is. um, I like, I had instances when people would make a lot of money and they would get scared of their success and they would decide this is not That what happens I want. so much. That happens so much. I cannot tell you how many times I have had on my calls people say, well, if we do what you're saying, I'm scared I won't have time to serve everyone. I'm like, we just make a wait list. We make a wait list. That's all we do. <laughs> that solves that problem. <laughs> And But they they're terrified. don't want, yeah, like Yeah. they terrified, they don't want it. They like, you know what, like I'd rather, I'd rather go back. And, you know, also like I wanted to mystify and kind of normalize, like if you want to go back to corporate, go back to corporate. This is Yes, absolutely do it. nothing. Like you built your personal brand, you built your authority, you built your voice. Go back to corporate if entrepreneurship is, you know what, This is not for me. Good for you for recognizing that early and taking Yes. that leverage. And like you can run your podcast. Like uh, one Right, of my, still. yeah, Yeah, you can still you can do both if you if you're passionate about both, go for it. yeah. And uh, if it or if it is not this season, so this is where it is faulty because uh, we know that probably ninety percent of uh, small businesses, entrepreneurs. quote unquote fail I, and a better question how many of them actually actually rebuild and the fact that somebody decides to rebuild or not it's not your coach's responsibility it is Right. their responsibility So let me clarify. What yes I mean is I'm looking for their clients who are implementing, who are doing what they're saying. And I can tell whether or not they're implementing based on whether or not they've made any changes, right? Because a coach is going to tell you to change things. That's one of their jobs is to make sure that you're doing things in an effective manner. So that is what I do is I look at the people who they're interacting with, who I know are their clients. who I see the transformation and I have a special superpower where I can understand people deeply after just meeting them. Uh, that comes from humanitarian work with people who had survived human trafficking. And so that's specifically what I'm looking for because we all have clients who refuse to take brave action. That's not our fault as service providers. But when I see someone who's taking brave action, even though they're nervous, And who's breaking out of the mode that they were in. That's what I want. That's what I want my coach to help me do. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you can find those uh, coaches for sure. And um, you will find people who like, and for me, it is more so like, are you testing the hypothesis? Because also you will like every coach will have those clients who will, mm -mm, I'm going to do it my way. Like, no, Ugh. post less and post high quality posts. Stop posting. Stop talking at people. I'm I'm going to be in, in my DM and still like flashy images, busy post and, you know, educational talk at you content. I like it's no longer working in 2024, 2025. You have to bring your own like you got to you got to tell the story. So. Well, and all the algorithms are decentivizing that kind of content. We've seen it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, and, and it's like post like right now posting less. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can post like three times a week and maybe do one live. But like, yes. <laughs> why? Why would I create five, seven pieces of content to dilute my messaging when I can just have a theme? So I think we have a like and all, the last question. Do you prefer to work in a group, small group, or do you prefer to work strictly one on one? I like both. So usually if I'm working with someone one-on-one -on -one and they have a group, I'll join that too. OK, OK. Well, I think we have like I think we have a uh, like a coaching persona like uh relationship mar marketing oriented. This is something that you can actually ask them. Um uh, they are fairly flexible with your way of marketing. 
uh, they should probably have not not maybe not like a podcast coach, but like they should be able to help you and assist you with very strategic steps because there are very few but very strategic steps when you create your podcast, how you turn your podcast into lead generation. Um, stuff and also like it applies the same for youtube and um they like they should in shape they should be i would say i i honestly would say like going above 5k above 5k for for sure like um and also like the duration for like for the coaching like engagement right like if uh, some coaches like to work i like to work with people six months at a time and then we reassess Yeah. because um usually people get like results in like what two months and then we just like tweak and pivot and not necessarily pivot but we we, we tweak the Smaller messaging adjustments. smaller Yeah. adjustments like sales goals reviews and um because messaging trends like you can have the right messaging and the right words on your social media but when people get on the zoom with you you're like blah and like people like oh to risk it <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's so so true. i i and also uh, i think the final factor and i think the most important factor in it this is not measurable and this is not like you can't really document it a person you like a person Hmm. you vibe with like Yes, yeah, for sure. i know so many coaches uh that i know that they will help me i know that they have incredible results I just don't vibe with them. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's I just super don't. valid. I just don't vibe with them. Well, um, let me ask you this. Was it helpful? Do you have like, do you have more clarity on your person who are you looking for? Do you have more like um, great characteristics for your next mentor, for your next coach? Like, what are you taking away with you from this interview? Yeah, I think that was really clarifying. And I have a question for you, actually, if I Yes, can turn the tables a little bit. of course. So what qualities do you think you have for people who are looking for a coach in their pivot? Yes. Um, well, one thing like that I'm really, really good at, I'm really, really good at, and this is like, this is really hard to, like, and maybe you can help me to actually put it in the marketing, in the marketing language. I'm very good at building people up. Like basically people come to me and like, oh, this is why it's not working. Well, let's let's mold and sculpt and build you together and put everything together. And these are elementary components that you're gonna like that you're gonna implement and boom, they build their own conferences. And um also listening aspect right because like you said one size doesn't fit all because for my clients and this is something that i'm also learning uh like what one thing that i uh change in my coaching practice there's no longer available netflix and chill for entrepreneurs what i mean by that it's lo those modules like nine twelve modules that you have to watch Oh, yeah. Hours, and then yep. Hours. I mean, we all we're busy. We build businesses. I don't like. I don't have time to watch your Netflix and chill, especially with the episode. Like, I'll like choose your own adventure. Like, no, we are all in this together, and this is something that I remove completely, and I uh, microdosing. uh to my clients the specific materials only when they need it and like oh you don't know how to close high ticket sales like this is the framework that we learn in person watch this client like this is like this is our role play like really like model us like tune in oh uh you need more clarity on your ideal uh qualified uh customer not just icp watch this and then like we're, we're going to talk about it not just like watch this 
all of the replays, all of the modules, and then like implement it on your own. Like this is not right. what I'm doing. <laughs> Good so, luck in your adventure in obscurity, right? <laughs> right, right. Yes, like and like this, like this, this is um, and this is my superpower. And also as a clinical psychologist, helping people to get out of their own way if they're willing. Right. And this is very important if they're willing, because I yeah. will. I will confront you with like your limiting beliefs and with your reject uh, with your rejection or with your uh, resistance. And resistance is a normal path, uh, like when we're implementing something. But it's important for us to join that journey together and walk that path together. So that's what like that's what um, helps me with the pivot. And more importantly, a person who learned all of the harsh, like, and I mean harsh lessons from the pivot, like, I will help you to avoid some of the, like, detrimental uh, mistakes that I made, like, yeah. with, with my pivot, because I get, I, I, I honestly, like, this is, this is why I'm dedicating the month of December to talk about it, because I can't just fit it into, like, 20 minutes, 30 minutes into you. No, <laughs> it's a, it's a whole process. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, I have a question for you. Okay. My question for you is, um, when, once, uh, if we like, when a person knows about like, cause a lot of coaches, like they, uh, it's this weird like one-sided form of marketing hey if you want to close 15 more clients and close 25k deal in one single day with my blah 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 strategy you will Framework. get blah yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah 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 uh -huh, and uh -huh. people are tuning out like i mean i'm like i'm honestly like oh okay well like hey attention coaches <laughs> like oh <laughs> <laughs> so like for us for uh anybody who has expertise based business and we do have tangible results that we deliver for example twenty five thousand dollars in one single yeah. day and then going and again not income claim because also we have to be careful about like because i can do. cut I yes, because of the laws, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I can promise you that you will. It's not guaranteed, right? It's just like what what have been done before. What you like, what you can do. Like, I don't know what you can do. Like, can you? Like, maybe you can do more. Maybe you can do less. Maybe you can do anything. So, how would we work Smith into the story that builds trust? Because right now, like more than uh ever we need trust we need yeah. attention and we need community so uh if i were to think about my next post that i'm crafting what perspective what the standpoint i should think about my post to articulate that and don't necessarily sound like another bro marketer coach <laughs> bro marketer i love that so um there's actually a system that i developed specifically for this because I have a degree in comparative world literature. I'm a storyteller at heart. And when I first started, people would be like, oh, you, you're part of StoryBrand, right? And I'd be like, no, I'm not. I do not advocate for StoryBrand. And the reason why is because they build stories that point to nothing. We don't want that. We want strategic stories that are pointing toward our offer. And the way to build that trust, and everyone hates it when I say this, is to mirror the journey that your person is on right now by telling them how you failed. Ooh. Uh, isn't I, it what I'm doing right now? Yes, it <laughs> is. And I make my clients do it, right? If they're willing, if they don't want to hire me because they don't want to talk about failure, that's fine. That's fine. They can do that. But when someone works with me, with me I'm like, listen, we're going to talk about failures and we're going to use something powerful that I created called emotional imagery where we take the feeling that you had when they're feeling the thing they're feeling right now we attach it to a taste a sight a smell 
something that sticks in their brain because how many stories do we hear every day, right? We need something that's going to be the glue in those little curves in their brain so they remember who we are. So I have my clients, I call it the story of struggle, right? It's their failure story of what happened about halfway between the point where they started and where they are now because that's where they feel stuck. That's where their client feels stuck right now. And we apply that emotional imagery to help the person remember. And that builds trust because when we're reading, let's say I'm reading fiction and I wrote about this in one of the many books I've written. We empathize to such a degree that our brain can't tell that it's not us going through that experience. This is golden. Uh, you know, this is so good because um, when I was thinking about my pivot, right? Like, back to pivot I like okay um so I I do all the right things but how do we build authority and how do we build trust we build authority and trust through vulnerability yes especially now listen in 2024 when everybody or majority of businesses are going through a rough time right now you're like hey I broke another record. Like, <laughs> my lunch broke another record. I'm like, bitch, I broke my back. So I don't want to, I don't want to hear about your record. <laughs> well, and guess what? Like, when you're like, look at me, I am perfect. How relatable is that? And it's not. And it, like, it is. And, and you know, like, you can be unrelatable in a very good sense in terms of like, ah, uh, I'm not like him. I'm not like her. And right. you inspire people to be like you. But also when you just talk about like win, 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 and you talk and you don't show your vulnerability and not uh, and not just through your failures, but like just be be human, being human, yes. right? People start to and like it doesn't matter how many times you will restream the same um testimony and the same story that you told people just like well like i simply don't believe i can make 25k in one and again not income claim but they don't believe that they can like that they can make that and um i actually had an epiphany for like for the month of december like you know what what I can do right now is to like really show my perspective. So, uh, it's built as uh, builds authority, built trust, and also like really communicate my uh, because um, I use a different uh, pricing approach. So basically, you uh, incrementally increase your price, but also like I was incrementally increasing my price on career coaching services for mid level professionals and okay. mid-level professionals it is not high ticket entrepreneurs who are selling their no. services for 10 and fifteen thousand dollars, and right. like it's literally click uh my husband actually said like eugene like you know your services are like ten fifteen thousand dollars like you you just know that like it's just such a big mismatch of the value that you provide and uh, yeah, you should incrementally increase your price, but it should be like at least you know at least start with seven k like on the on the on the bad day, and then right. see where you go from there. Because again, it is it is a market fit mismatch. Because when sophisticated entrepreneurs come to your event, come to your marketing, come to your page, and they see like oh they're like they they're automatically friend zone you because like oh like because you can't your price is too low they're like yeah. someone who does what you do can't charge this that's what's going on in their brain definitely i agree yeah. with your husband yeah so uh that that was like that one that was so so helpful um and um so i guess um now what can we implement? Because like everybody has their own superpower. My superpower yeah. is showing up on video and telling my story on video and like connecting with uh, people um, like in person or through my podcast. So are the same principle would apply for your video or audio content that you just described for your written post? 
Absolutely. Like this is a universal application. Like communication at its very foundation is as effective in all the different mediums as it is in the first medium you created in. So like for me, people ask me all the time, I just got this question yesterday, Kristen, how do you make your videos? And I'm like, well, my brain is defaulted to writing. So I write out my points before I record it. And then guess what? I turn that into a written post and sometimes it makes it into my newsletter. But I start at my brain's default because like you mentioned earlier, and I have to bring up the book, uh, The War of Art, not The Art of War, but The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, which is all about overcoming resistance. We have to give our brain quick wins when we're pushing ourselves to take brave action that we wouldn't normally take. So, so good. That's what I would say. Yeah. Like if you know, okay, I'm good. I show up on video, do video first, pull your copy from your video. Oh my gosh, this is so good because like what I developed uh, for my personal needs. So I'm like, I'm a, I'm a software engineer, not just a, like clinical psychologist. And I know AI technologies really, really well. So I created a custom personal uh, GPT that oh, nice. I literally created like the messaging framework uh, based on the components, you know, like mm, storytelling, uh, speak directly to what they're going through, vulnerability, blah, 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 all, all that stuff. And uh, what I do, I like, okay, I need three posts. I literally turn the camera on without like anything. I just talk to the, like, oh. it's just a brain Sorry. dump, like, boom i'm like now let's just organize that so this is what i said i need one post that will kind of like broad and uh, will appeal to a uh, larger audience to build my following i need one post that will nurture my existing community that knows me and one post that will convert through vulnerability and storytelling go and and it does wonderful job yeah, so I will say, I know your brain is like the software engineer brain. My brain is not that way. And I'm not a huge fan of AI other than use it as a tool. Mm -hmm. So when it gives you those things, definitely go through and edit it. Because oh, yeah. as much as you think a robot can sound like you, it doesn't. And the problem that a lot of us have, not me, because I have been writing for so long, but we don't know what our own voice sounds like in writing. Yes, that's that's so good too because for me, um, Chat GPT personally, it is the ideation tool. Yes, ideation yeah, you're using tool. it as a tool, one hundred percent, and I totally agree with that. And that's the way to use it. And even I use it, right? I mean, I can write a sales page, but way better than Chat GPT, and I know because I tested it when it first came out. I spent months testing it. So I know I can write better than it, but if it saves me time, like if I need summary points, yeah, I'm putting whatever I wrote in there. I'm seeing what happens. Then I'm editing it. It is a useful tool. It is. Kristen, it's so good. Like, I'm so grateful that we met and like, thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. You brought so much value. And um, I think you're like as so many listeners and uh, viewers like we like i am uh, per, uh will be on the market for a mentor and a coach because i love personal development i'm a personal development junkie so and i think this this is important question right now like since we all experience coaching so much and we all experience one size fits all so much and like we all like it's not that people stop buying coaching people want personalized uh solution specifically for them and yeah. also like i don't know like a lot of coaches will come after me and say like but but like but why do you have to repeat yourself netflix and chill does it like i have so much online on my plate i do not have time i literally just sent somebody an em today they invited me for a seven day trial i said like i do not have time to yeah. watch the modules i'm sorry like i was and i respect that person i respect that guy he does an amazing job i like it's just not what I'm willing to do. <laughs> so, well, Kristen, yeah, go ahead. As a coach, we should be condensing things down, right? 
that's one of our jobs. And if you're just like, here, go sit for five hours on this platform, that's is that really doing that? You're not giving them what they need when you could have a two minute conversation and just give them that same gem yeah. that they spent five hours looking for. Exactly. So Kristen, how my listeners and viewers can find you and connect with you? So my favorite place to hang out is on LinkedIn under Kristen and Spencer. And if you want to learn more about how our services work, I would say you can go to our website, which is litsym.com, litsym.com, which is short for literary symmetry, because everyone needs well-balanced words to make real sales. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I will see you all um, on the next episode.